our faith in whom do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose to the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will now be led in prayer by Reverend Dudley King. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all and to all our social media family as well. I want to wish you a happy Grandparent Day. You know, today is a special day. In 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed an into law Grandparent Day, making this the first Sunday today after Labor Day as National Grandparent Day. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate and commemorate this day to honor, appreciate with heartfelt gratitude for our older generations of family. Amen. Holding in our hearts still those who have transitioned home, while those that remain with us hold fast to family, procreation, dignity, preservation as commanded by God the Father in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 28. And he blessed them. Let us now bow our heads and hearts in unison asking for the invocation of God to come. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for sending us the former Jimmy Carter, your servant, who decreed and declared Sunday the 10th of September on every year this declaration of Grandparents Day forevermore. We thank and magnify your name now for being our God and the God of our forefathers. We exalt your name for giving us pause on this day for our elders and older generations of family and friends here with us today. You're holy. You're magnificent. Yes, Lord. You're awesome yes. to us, your people. Thank you for the holy and consecrated grandparents yes. that are still with us today. Yes, thank, you. thank you for the grandparents who have guided us into the nurture and admonition yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. We open up our mouth today and shout hallelujah, hallelujah. to our glorious grandparents on their day. Yes. These godly grandparents are holding up the blood-stained banner of the cross that has been passed to them many years ago. Now, as we look to our present elder generation for direction, we too need the same armor, the same God, yeah. and the same spirit that gave them victory over and above our present obstacle and mountain. Prepare our grandchildren today and equip them with the same anointing consecration that fell upon our fathers and mothers of yesteryear. The battle with Satan and his angels still exists today. His earthly deception, his scheme, his strategy. But we know, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to assist us, to model for us how to defend the devil and remain victorious every day in every way. Thank you, Jesus. In love, you gave to us yes. for a little while, grandparents to guide us, yes. mentor us, teach us your way, precept and doctrine of all, yes. to strengthen us all in the might of the Lord, yes. to be courageous and unafraid of this spiritual warfare, yes. to make soldiers and warriors of us to the cross of Christ for the equipping and preparation to accept this banner that will someday be passed to them just as it was passed to us. Yeah. 
pass to us younger generation, even when we believe we're not ready yes. and able to receive it, to pay attention to our grandparents, pay attention to every little thing and every big thing that life brings their way. Yes. Teaching us that life is not a test. We only have one life to get it right with God, yes. ourselves, and our family. Yes. So teach us now to number our days yes. and to mind our way. Yes. Our way should always be godly and seasoned with salt. Yes. Remember yes. now the patriarchs and matriarchs that have transitioned to the heavenly journey whom we still hold dear in our hearts. Yes. Keep us merciful graceful and watchful all the day long on yes. this day and every day yes. to choose only the good and godly thing yes. out of this old smorgasbord board of life. Yes. We thank you now for the clear model that you want us to be, that we need to be, because as grandchildren now, we will transition to grandparents someday. This is our prayer on Grandparents Day 2023. Amen. Amen.
And we're going to now go to our scriptures and uh, on this wonderful Grand Parents Day, it's good to look out and see the faces of generations of Mass Memorial Church. Amen. 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 So if you would come and go with me, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs. I'll give you a moment to get there. We're going to be in chapter 17 and uh, various verses, but we will start with verse number one. Um, also, this is uh, from the New King James Version of the Bible. And you have found it in the book of Proverbs 17. Say amen. 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 And we will begin at the uh, first chapter. And the book of Proverbs, the Lord tests heart. So this is indeed for families. Uh, and it reads, beginning with verse 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. We're going to jump down to the third verse. The fighting pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord quiet the hearts. Verse 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their father. Verse 8, a gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. And we're going to go down to the 17th verse. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born to poor adversity. Verse 22, a merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. And we're going to close with the 27th verse. He that hath knowledge spared his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Praise God. The word of God is for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, I have a poem and a cherished bond by Catherine Colsifer. As I was reading this poem, I was thinking to myself, the little ones out there right now, they won't know what it means. But as they get older, if they go back and read it, it will be. It means something to them because they don't understand the words. So a cherished bond. Grandma and Grandpa are so wise and so kind. Their love is unconditional and security they provide. Compassion and strength, always an encouraging word. Their home is a true haven. You are always heard. No wish too impossible or too small. Patience is immense as they accommodate it all. Appreciation we feel for their lifetime of grace, our cherished bond will never be replaced. That is a cherished bond by Catherine Lucifer. So we need to think about those cherished bonds. Those bonds, you know, it's a song that says, Blessed be the ties that bind our hearts in Christian love. Yes. And so we're tied in Christian love, but we're also tied in blood, right? Yes. That blood that, you know, from family to family. And so just like that poem talked about cherishing your grandparents, you know, and I know I'm adding some little extra stuff, but just like my grandmother used to sew, when she was so um, dark baby doll clothes for my dolls, you know what I mean? And I meant to break them, because I actually still have them. I don't have the dolls, but I got the clothes. You know, the, the, the dolls didn't make it, but the clothes tested, you know, stood the test of time. And she would sew these things by hand, you know, with so much detail. And everybody has different stories, you know, and so this is just a time to think about those stories and think about how God has blessed us, has he brought us from a mighty long way, and how he's brought our family, you know, yeah. Through, um, we can even say through um, toils and snares because we've gone through as families, you know, and we just have to hold together, 
we have to hold together. So I just wanted to make sure we think about those cherished bonds. Now it's time for our recognition of visitors. Now, I see a lot of family. Amen. But do we have any visitors? And I'll say first time visitors because I see some people that I saw on vacation Bible school. You know, but do we have any first time visitors that would like to stand and say anything? Okay. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. We're so happy you're here. We hear about you because it's so good to, to meet you and to see you and see that you look just like those parents. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I just want to thank the families that are here because I can look and I see the different families and I praise God for, um, we, like I said, we are a part of God's family, but also just to see the families here today. So praise God. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Now I'm going to turn the announcements over to Reverend Swanigan because and to Sister Marilyn because I don't know them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sister Sharon. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to have all of our grandchildren out. Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Saturday, uh, that will be September the 16th, here at the church at 11 a.m. We will have our annual planning meeting slash church conference. That is at 11 a.m. on Saturday, September the 16th. Uh, I'll have the districts, I'll have the dates from the district, and uh, we'll uh, govern ourselves accordingly. Also, on July the Sunday, July the 17th is our installation service. I'm sorry, September the 17th. Thank you. September the 17th at our 11 o'clock service is our installation service. And we will be installing two new stewardesses that day. Amen. 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 and Sister Janine Swanigan. Give them a hand. Amen. Amen. So on the following Sunday, that will be the fourth Sunday, will be our friend and family Sunday. That will be the fourth Sunday, friend and family Sunday. So I invite you all to come on back on the fourth Sunday of September mm -hmm. at 11 a.m. and join us for our friend and family Sunday. Amen? And bring a dish. And bring a dish. Amen. Also, there will, the youth will be sponsoring a bake sale after this service. Please go up back and support our youth. Amen? Amen. A very important announcement. On September the 30th at 4 p.m. at the Kingdom Ministries, it's located down the street here, 3000 West Miller Road, uh, we will be honoring two pillars in the community, two very prominent women in the community. And one of those women that we'll be honoring is Sister Mary Plummer Rogers. Amen. She has served in this community as a sojourner uh, for continued enlightenment of the African-American history and has spearheaded the Juneteenth program for over 30 years. Amen. 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 And we're coming together to show our love and show our appreciation uh, for her. So let us give Marilyn uh, 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 just some love this morning. Amen. 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 September the 30th, 2023 at 4 p.m. at Kingdom Ministries. Meet me there. We're going to have a wonderful time honoring our sister beloved here at Mass Memorial. Amen? Amen. Amen. That concludes 
Um, some of my announcements, I'll have more information for you at our planning meeting um, that uh, was from our district planning meeting. Uh, we have a very visionary uh, uh, conference here. We're looking forward to God doing great things. Good to see everyone. Let us now continue in our service. Amen. take up the offering after the message. Okay, so with that in mind, then now we will have a presentation by Brother Marcus Martin. All right. Amen. Sister Deborah asked me to read this poem. Okay. It's called Grandparents Are. <clears throat> Grandparents are a family's greatest treasure the founders of a loving legacy, the greatest storytellers, the keepers of traditions that linger on in cherished memory. Grandparents are the family's strong foundation. Their very special love sets them apart through happiness and sorrow, through their special love and caring, grandparents keep a family's close at heart.
brought you a mighty long way. You want to give him some praise this morning. He brought me father in a mighty long way. He brought me all the way. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him yeah, making a way out of no way for each and every one of us yeah. here this morning by his grace. And so we thank God for his presence here in this service on this morning. Let us now approach the throne of grace. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I do want to thank Dr. Logan uh, for her message on last week, Jesus Matters. And I do thank uh, Reverend Dudley King for standing in for me, uh, being the worship leader. And I thank this choir carrying on without me. Uh, those wonderful people there I was with, uh, and they stole me from me. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> they let me come back. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we had some good quality time together as a family. You know, you only get one chance with your grandchildren. Amen. And it's something that they will remember for the rest of their lives. Amen. I'd like to direct your attention to Deuteronomy. Uh, while you're going to Deuteronomy 32, let us thank Sister Deborah Plummer for putting this entire service and program together. Amen. Sister Plummer does things with passion, and she she goes over the top in everything she does. I, I just have to say it, Amen. and I appreciate her for that. And as you are all well, and I'm sure you all do as you appreciate her as well. Amen. Deuteronomy seven thirty two and seven. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you your elders, and they will tell you. Amen. Amen. Then that other passage in uh, Proverbs 17, 6. Children's children are a crown to the age, and parents are the pride of their children. From this passage, we like these passages, we like to use this subject just to catch your attention. Can't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me nothing. Rap song New Year's ago. La 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 yeah. Wait till I get my money right. Oh, 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 oh. I had a dream. I could buy my way to heaven. When I woke, I spent that on a necklace. Oh, 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 oh. I told God I'd be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act. Reckless, to whom much is given, much is tested. Get arrested, guess until he get the message. Oh, 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 oh. I feel the pressure under the scrutiny, and what I do act more stupidly. Oh, 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 oh. Brought more jury, more Louis V. My mama couldn't get through to me. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 the drama, people suing me. I'm on TV talking like it's just you and me. I'm just saying how I feel. Man, I ain't one of, Cos of the Cosby's. I ain't go to Hillman. Oh, 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 oh. I guess the money should have changed him. I guess I should have forgot where I came from. La, 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 la. Hey, wait till I get my money right. La, 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 yeah. Then you can't tell me nothing, right? Excuse me, was 
you saying something? Oh, oh, you can't tell me nothing. Ha uh ha, -huh. you can't tell me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you can't tell me nothing. Very familiar rapper who we know as Kanye West. I think this was, I think this song was before his mega hats, I don't know. Entitled, Can't Nobody Tell Me Nothing. And as I thought about this on this Grandparents Sunday, I thought about this phrase, and you hear it all the time, can't nobody tell me nothing. It bothers me. First of all, it's not even proper English. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> but secondly, can you imagine what your life would be like if no one could tell you anything? No sense of going to school, school because nobody can tell you anything. When your car breaks down, don't even take it to the shop because can't nobody tell you nothing. You may as well drive through red lights and, and through stop signs because can't nobody tell you nothing. When you get sick and stay home, you know, when you get sick, just stay home. Don't go to the hospital because can't nobody tell you nothing. Drop out of college because can't nobody tell you nothing. Stay at home, at Home Depot, go up and down the aisles all day looking for a box of nails because can't nobody tell you nothing. Keep beating your head against the wall because can't nobody tell you nothing. Keep believing two plus two equals five because nobody can tell you nothing. Keep believing in unicorns and leprechauns because can't nobody tell you nothing. Keep believing that square pegs fit in round holes because can't nobody tell you nothing. I, 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 I'll, I'll give it to Kanye. It, it, he, he's a mass of fortune in the rap game, writing hip hop, rap songs, rapping with others. Rapping about others, can't nobody tell me nothing. It may be a good hook for a good rap tune, uh, but it's not a good hook for a philosophy in life. Because if you just keep on living, young people, sooner or later, somebody will need to tell you something. In fact, the people that can tell you something are sitting right here in this room right now. They're senior citizens. They're grandparents. Uh, they're present. They're retired. Right here in this room, there are MSU faculty members. They're church officers. They are, gov they are government employees. They're educators. Uh, they're retirees, they're entrepreneurs, they're Sunday school teachers, they're ushers, stewards, stewardesses, trustees, and all these people meet and exceed the qualifications to tell you something. Because where you're going, they've already been there. They've already recovered from the sickness that you've just been diagnosed with. They've already raised the family that you're getting ready to start. Yeah. They know a lie when they hear one. They know if a young man or a young lady is good for their son or their daughter. They can see the devil coming a mile away. They know wolves who wrap themselves in sheep's clothing. They know how to keep the same cell phone for 30 and 40 years. And, and if you need somebody to tell you something, these are the folk right here in this room that are qualified to tell you something. And by the time we get to Deuteronomy 30, 32 and 7, Moses is giving his final words to the nation of Israel. And he says to the people, 
although you're not the same people that came out of Egypt. You are the people who were born in the wilderness. You are the generation who were born in the wilderness. In other words, Moses is telling uh, his people that there is much about their history they don't know. They heard about their history, but they did not live during that era. But if you want to know about your history, he says, ask your father and ask some of the senior people in the community, ask the elders, ask them, and they will tell you. You don't know what it's like to be a slave in Egypt. You don't know what it's like to have to make bricks without straw. You were not there when the death angel came to Egypt and took all the firstborn. Yeah. And all we had to do was put blood on, the blood of the lamb on our doorposts and that death angel passed over us. You were not there when God parted the Red Sea. You, you, you were not there when we got to the Red Sea and had to walk through on dry ground. You don't know what it was like for God to feed you with manna from heaven. You don't know what it was like to drink water from the rock. And if you don't know where you, you came from, you will have to ask your elders because there are things in your history you will never know until somebody tells you. So I just stop by on this grandparent Sunday to let you know that the people you see around you right here today are the people who can tell you something. First of all, my brothers and sisters, they can tell you about life, about life. In Proverbs 17 and six, children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers. You, you don't get gray hair or go to bald head living uh, just, just, to, just to get it. You don't get gray hair and bald head just, just to be living. You, you get it because you have some experience. And our senior citizens, our grandparents, know about life, and they will tell you in order to be successful in life, you have to work. Anybody know that? You got to work. There's no way to get out of living without working. And there's no way to get out, out of working without living. You have to work. When you, you have to work when you are born. Amen? And there's no way to get around it. If you're born with everything, there are a lot of people that are born with, with, with nothing. And when they work, they finally get something. Amen? And so in life, in order to be successful, you and I have to work. And not only in life do we have to work, but we also have to wait. We also have to wait. And, and, and one of the problems that we have in our society today is impatience. Yeah. Waiting, my brothers and sisters, is a part of life. We have to wait in school. We have to wait on that job. We have to wait to grow a mustache. We have to wait. Uh, to wear makeup, you have to wait to get your driver's license. How many want their driver's license? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, Caleb. Wait, you gotta wait. You have to wait for that next iPhone. Hey, Amen. I see five year olds with iPhones. If you can't wait, life is going to be miserable for you. Amen. Life is not Burger King, have it your way. Because there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to wait on God. Because, you know, God is never in a hurry. We just have to wait on Him. Listen to your grandparents when they tell you 
he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Listen to your grand grandparents when they tell you, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. If you ask the people around you about life, they will tell you, you have to work to be successful. You have to wait in life. And then in this life, you will have to learn how to war. You have to learn how to war. Because if you want anything out of life, you're gonna to have to fight for it. You're gonna to have to fight for your finances. You're gonna to have to fight for your family. You're gonna to have to fight for your children. And in this life, you are not entitled to anything. You have to fight to get it. You are competing with others to get that great job, to start that business. And, and, and you start to fight on day one. When you get out of your mother's womb, that's when the fight starts. And if you aren't willing to war, you will not be successful in this life. In this life, we must learn how to work. We must learn how to wait. We must learn how to war. And then in this life, we must learn how to walk. We must learn how to walk. In other words, when life gets you down, you have to get up and you have to keep on stepping. Amen. The Bible says that a just man falls seven times but they keep getting up. Don't ever let anybody count you out. You just keep getting up. You just keep on walking, keep on stepping. For I heard the song where they say, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. A saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. Where are the get up people today? Where, where are the people who hit the ground but didn't stay down? You got back up. Where, where are the people who didn't hit the ground and crash? You hit the ground and you bounced back up. In order to be successful in this life, you're going to have to learn how to walk and keep on walking. Because there are people in this room who can tell you that in order to be successful in this life, you're gonna to have to work, you're gonna to have to wait, you're gonna to have to war, you're gonna to have to learn how to walk. And then there are people in this room who can tell you about life, but they can also tell you about lack. Hello, somebody. They can tell you about lack. We have raised a generation of people who have everything, but act like they have nothing because they don't understand lack. They don't understand being without. Listen, if you don't have a side, an iPhone, that doesn't mean you live in poverty. You just don't have an iPhone. And when these people tell you that they had to walk everywhere, it simply means Walking was their only mode of transportation. These people know about powdered eggs and powdered milk. A lot of people don't know what it means to eat cereal with powdered milk. These people know about spam. Spam in the round can. Not, not spam in the square can. If you had spam in the square can, you were bougie. Amen? I'm talking about spam in the round can. The spam in the square can came from the grocery store. But the spam in the round can, that came from the government. In fact, if I put about 10 bars of government cheese outside of that vestibule, it won't be any left when we leave this church. These people here can tell you about sugar water. What is sugar water? That's Kool-Aid without, amen, just water without Kool-Aid, sugar and water. They can tell you about sugar toast. Put it in the bowl, amen, put butter on it and put sugar on it, amen. These people knew about lack. 
They knew about six and seven people living in a one bedroom house. These people knew how to send their children to college when they never been themselves. These people can tell you about an outhouse. That's a bathroom not in the house. These people know how to deal with lack. They can tell you how to deal with lack. They didn't have name brand. They didn't have Nikes. Amen. Or Adidas. They just had a pair of shoes. These people like nice things just like everybody else. But then they knew how to go in survival mode. Because I can't get what I want, I gotta get what I need. So I gotta get in survival mode. They knew how to do things to survive. They knew how to take a half a pound of hamburger and feed 10 people. Put some bread in it and spread it out. These people didn't need a microwave to cook. They didn't need a box of cake. Amen. They just cooked everything from scratch. They didn't know anything about jiffy cornmeal. Yeah, all they knew about was buttermilk and cornbread, and they had it for dinner. I wish I had somebody here to help me this morning. They didn't cook with Crisco. They cooked with lard and bacon fat. And, and, and when you went out to school in the morning, they put that lard on your face. So you can shine. They didn't have lotion. You see, my people knew how to survive. Amen. And they took a pot of liquor out of greens. Yeah, there are some people in this room who can tell you about life, who can tell you about lack, but they also can tell you about love. I'm not talking about infatuation. I'm not talking about that puppy love. I'm talking about true love. Amen. Mary J. Blige, she called it real love. She said, I'm searching for real love. I'm talking about sacrificial love. And, and there are people here today who can tell you how they raised their siblings, how they raised themselves, and then how they raised their own, then had to raise their own families, and then they had to take care of their grandchildren. And then when one of their siblings died, they had to take care of their nieces and their nephews. I'm talking about real love here today. Real love. If you are here today and you were raised by your grandparents, you ought to give God some praise right now. You ought to give him some glory because that's real love. There are some people here today who can tell you how they stayed married to the same person 40 and 50 years. And they, didn't, they weren't married to different people 40 and 50 years. They were married to the same person. There are some people who can tell you what it means when you make the promise until death do us part. There are some people whose love is so strong that even death doesn't part them. That's why we have widows that live for 30, 40 years after their partner died, because death didn't even part them. That's real love. And we got all these songs about love, but, but nothing about real love, true love, authentic love. And there are people here today who can tell you about real authentic love. We have people here today who can tell you about life, about lack, about love. But the main reason we're here today is that these people can tell you about the Lord. Tell you about the Lord. And the first thing that they can tell you about the Lord is that he is real. I heard the songwriter say, there are some things that I may not know, and there are some places I cannot go, but I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, I can feel him in my soul. They can tell you God is real. And then my brothers and sisters, the computer cut off my soul. 
good clothes here. And it just took, it just took my sermon away. But they can tell you about the Lord. Let me see if I can remember. They can tell you about the Lord. Amen. They can tell you that God is faithful. That he, he will keep his promises. That in him, in his promises are in him, yea, and in him, amen. God is faithful. And then, my brothers and sisters, God is real. Amen. I can feel it in my hands. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel it all over me. Anybody know a God like that? Who, who's real? Who's faithful? Who will save you? Anybody need to be saved this morning? How many of you, how many has he picked up? Did he pick you up? Did he turn you around? Did he put your feet on solid ground? I, I don't know about you, but I've been to the water and I've been baptized. I've been to the water and I've been baptized. Stepped into the water, chilled my soul. It chilled my body, but not my soul. Thank God that he'll save me. I went down in the water. I came up speaking in tongues. I believe that he had filled me with the Holy Spirit. I knew my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't know about you, but God so loved the world that he gave his own life. There are some people who can testify and tell you about the Lord. They can tell you that he can open doors that no man can shut. That he can shut doors that no man can open. They can tell you that God can make a way. Won't he make a way? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? They can tell you about a God who is able to do it. He's able, he's able to feed you with bread from all high. He's able to provide your every need. I don't know about you, but there's a people who here who can tell you about the Lord. So don't say, can nobody tell me nothing? Because there are so many things in life that we learn when we listen. Listen to your mother. Listen to your grandparents. Amen? I thank God for my grandparents. I wasn't around, they weren't around long, but the, the, the time I had with them, I learned a lot about life. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, I learned a lot about the Lord. Amen. 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 He's the only one that's going to carry you through Amen. these difficult times. At this time, my brothers and sisters, the door of the church is open. Amen. Won't you come to Christ just as you are? The door of the church is open. Won't you stand to your feet with the invitation? It's an invitation to Christian discipleship. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we extend to you this invitation. Won't you come? You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. The door of the church is open. invite you, my brothers and sisters in the YouTube listening audience to join Mass Memorial Christian Baptist Episcopal Church. We're located 5601 South Waverly Road in Lansing, Michigan. You need a church home. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's, I was reminded that we need to pray for Rams. This is uh, 
Chauncey's son. Amen. Let's pray that God will heal his body. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Touch Ram right now. Touch Ram, oh God, and, and let him know, God, that there's no disease, there's no sickness that's too hard for you. Touch his body and make him whole. We pray the prayer of faith for him right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say, Amen.
sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, to rule, to abide with you henceforth now and forever. And the church of God said with one voice. Thank you.